My own daughter begged my husband to cheat on me and now they both want forgiveness. Am I the heartless one here? Six months ago, my ex cheated on me with the woman he claimed was the one that got away, a woman he reconnected with when he was out with our daughter. It all started with a story he told her, a tale of a tragic love that was stopped by disapproving parents, and my daughter, the hopeless romantic, became obsessed with it. She encouraged him to pursue that old flame, to follow his true happiness. He did, and I found out. That's when everything fell apart, and now, everyone tells me I'm the one who's being cruel for not forgiving them. Six months ago, my ex reunited with his the one that got away when he was out with our daughter. He was acting weird and melancholy after meeting her so our daughter asked about her and he told her about their tragic love story, which is literally just their parents being against their relationship. My daughter, who was a hopeless romantic, was deeply moved by their love story and pushed his dad to pursue his ex and cheat on me. And well, he cheated and I found out. The day I found out about my ex cheating was a blur, I was crying so hard that day that I barely even understand what they were saying. But I remember my daughter saying, Mom, Dad made us happy for years, it is time for him to be happy too. I honestly would have laughed if she said that to me today, but at the time, I was crying so hard it didn't register how ridiculous she was. When we separated, our daughter declared she was staying with me, patting my ex on the shoulder and saying I'll take care of her, Dad, don't worry. I just rolled my eyes at the time cause I was no longer speaking to them both. The first day my ex was gone, she surprised with breakfast in bed, which I shoved down on the floor in front of her. She cleaned it without complaint and after that day, I started locking my door to avoid such incidents. She cooks for me all the time and every time she did, I just ignore it. In fact I didn't eat much at the time because my ex would often come by and drop off groceries. Whenever the hunger gets too unbearable, I would order delivery and eat in my room. Fast forward to three months, my ex came crying back, saying I was actually the one he loves. Which I honestly predicted because although he was very much hung up on the past, he was very sweet and loving to me. Our marriage was literally something out of a movie, even after 17 years of marriage, we still acted like newlyweds. Date nights every weekend, cuddles, and playing video games together. We never even fought, we just banter playfully. The day he came back he told me how they always fought, about how she wasn't as understanding and loving as me, about how he missed my cuddles and playing video games with me. Of course I just ignored him. After that day, he started staying at our house. He tried to sleep in our room the first night, but I stood up and slept in the living room. After that he started sleeping in the guest room. That day too, I remember my daughter telling me, as she sat with me on the living, aren't you glad mom, dad is back. We're gonna be a family again. I would have laughed at her face if I wasn't busy treating her like air. After that day, they started doing everything they to make it up for me. My ex even started bringing me home flowers every day. They gave me gifts, cooked and cleaned for me, and all the while, I just kept ignoring them, not uttering a single word. Three days ago was the first day my daughter confronted me. Which is probably because it was her 17th birthday. I used to make homemade cakes for her and decorate the house depending on what her current interest is. That day she was crying in the kitchen and I just ignored her and walked past her to get coffee. She started talking to me, asking me why I couldn't forgive them. She told me I was being cruel, that they already did everything they could. She cried and cried, telling me all the stuffs we used to do on her birthday, about how happy we were, about how she wants to go back to that. That day I looked at her for the first time in six months and I felt nothing. I wasn't moved or anything by her tears. I didn't feel anger or hurt. I didn't feel sorry for what I did. After we stared at each other for a while, I just went back to my room without talking to her. That day was also the day my parents came and talked to me. They're trying to get me to forgive my ex and daughter. 
They never asked me before to forgive them. They said the same things my daughter said, that I was being cruel. When I confided to my best friend, she told me that maybe it's time to forgive them. That my daughter was still so young and she made a mistake but she's still my daughter. In all honesty, I don't feel like I did anything cruel, since they were the ones who betrayed me first. And although I'm not mad anymore, I honestly don't feel anything for them anymore and I feel like it's just a hassle to even try and be family with them. But people I know are insisting I just forgive them. Am I really the one being cruel here? Update 1 After my daughter's whole birthday meltdown, things got weird in ways I didn't think were possible. The next morning, I woke up to this long letter on my nightstand. It was from her, written in messy handwriting like she was rushing but still trying to make it look heartfelt. She wrote about how she thought she was helping save love when she encouraged her dad to chase his old flame. She admitted she thought she was doing something good, like in the movies where everyone's happier in the end. She even wrote, I thought love was about sacrifices, mom, and I thought you'd understand that. I left the letter right there on the nightstand. I didn't throw it away, didn't respond to it, just left it. I'm so tired of this game they're playing, where they try to act like I'm the unreasonable one for being hurt. Later that day, my ex decided it was his turn to try. He didn't even ask to talk, he just came into the living room while I was watching TV and sat down like we were old friends. He started with this long-winded speech about how he's been seeing a therapist, trying to become a better man for me and our daughter. He said he realized how much he hurt me and that he regrets everything. Then he said something that made me laugh, but not in a funny way, like the bitter kind of laugh. He said, the therapist told me that everyone deserves a second chance if they're willing to change. I looked at him and said, did your therapist say that before or after you told them you cheated on me and dragged our daughter into it? He looked stunned for a second, then started crying. Not just a few tears, but full-on ugly crying. I couldn't take it, so I turned the volume up on the TV to drown him out. He sat there for a while, and eventually, my daughter came into the room. She must have heard him crying because she immediately went to him, wrapped her arms around him, and gave me this look, like I was the villain in the story. She whispered something to him, probably telling him it was okay or something, and then they both just sat there, staring at me with these sad, pleading eyes. I didn't say anything. I grabbed my car keys and left the house. I ended up driving around for hours, not really going anywhere. Eventually, I pulled into the parking lot of this diner I used to go to with my best friend back in high school. It has kind of run down now, but they still make the best milkshakes. I sat in a corner booth and ordered one, just needing a moment to think. As I sat there, I started replaying everything in my head. The cheating, the betrayal, my daughter's involvement. It all felt so surreal, like something out of a bad soap opera. What I couldn't wrap my head around was why I was the one expected to forgive. Why was it on me to make things better? They're the ones who blew everything up, but somehow, I'm the bad guy for not wanting to play happy family again. By the time I got home, it was late. The house was dark, but I could tell my daughter was still awake because her bedroom light was on. I went straight to my room, locked the door, and just sat on the bed staring at the wall. The next morning, my parents showed up unannounced. I wasn't surprised, though, because my daughter had been on the phone with them a lot lately. My mom is big on family unity, so of course, she started with the whole speech about how forgiveness is important and how I should think about what this is doing to my daughter. She said, you're being too hard on her. She's just a kid, and kids make mistakes. I told her, she's 17, not 7. She knew what she was doing when she encouraged him to cheat. My dad stayed quiet for most of the conversation, but when he finally spoke, he said, maybe she didn't fully understand the consequences. You know how kids are. 
I couldn't believe it. They were really defending her, acting like her actions were just a minor misstep. I asked them, would you have forgiven me if I had done something like this to you? My mom looked uncomfortable, and my dad just changed the subject. Typical. By the time they left, I was even more exhausted than before. It feels like everyone in my life is trying to gang up on me, like I'm the unreasonable one for not forgiving them. My best friend even chimed in when I vented to her. She said, maybe it is time to start healing, you know? Your daughter's still young, and she's your family. At least think about it. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Why does no one understand that I'm not holding on to anger? I'm not even mad anymore. I just don't feel anything for them. My ex and my daughter could move to another country tomorrow, and I wouldn't care. It asked like they took the part of me that cared and shattered it completely. That night, my daughter tried to talk to me again. She came to my room and knocked softly, saying, Mom, can we talk? Please? I ignored her, and eventually, she gave up and walked away. I don't know what they expect from me. Forgiveness? A happy reunion? A magical reset button to erase everything that's happened? It s not that simple. It s never that simple. And honestly, I don't think I want it to be. Update 2 A few days after my parents visited, I started noticing my daughter and ex were acting strange. They weren't doing their usual over-the-top please forgive us routines. No letters, no flowers, no sobbing speeches. At first, I thought they'd finally given up, but then I realized they were avoiding me. They were whispering in corners, going quiet when I walked into the room. It felt like they were planning something, which made me uneasy. One evening, I came home from work and saw my daughter sitting in the living room, staring at her phone like she was waiting for something. My ex was pacing in the kitchen. I walked past them without saying anything, but then my daughter blurted out, Mom, we need to talk. I stopped and turned around, ready for another guilt trip, but her tone was different this time. She looked nervous, almost scared. My ex came into the living room and stood behind her, his face pale. He opened his mouth to say something, but my daughter cut him off. We have to tell you the truth. At that moment, I felt like my stomach dropped. I didn't know what was coming, but I knew it wasn't good. I crossed my arms and waited. My daughter started crying, and my ex looked like he wanted to disappear into the floor. Finally, she said, I didn't mean for it to happen like this. I thought I was helping, but... I didn't know how far it would go. What are you talking about? I asked. She broke down completely and confessed that she had actually been the one who orchestrated the whole thing. She hadn't just encouraged her dad to reconnect with his ex. She had found her. She admitted she'd gone online, tracked down the woman, and set up the initial meeting without telling anyone. She thought she was being a matchmaker and that it would make everyone's lives better. When my ex found out what she'd done, instead of shutting it down, he went along with it. He didn't stop to think about what it would do to our family. He didn't even try to resist. He just let our teenage daughter play Cupid and blow up our marriage. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I asked my ex, you knew she did this, and you still went through with it? He just nodded, looking ashamed but not saying anything. That's when my daughter said the thing that broke me. Through her sobs, she said, I just wanted to fix what I thought was broken. You and dad were so happy, but I thought maybe he needed something more, and I thought I could give it to him. I didn't say anything. I just stood there, staring at them, feeling like the floor had been ripped out from under me. Everything I thought I knew about the situation was even worse than I'd imagined. 
I walked out of the room without a word, grabbed my keys, and left. I drove to a hotel and stayed there for two days, ignoring all their calls and texts. I needed time to think, time to process everything they just dumped on me. When I finally came back, I sat them both down and told them the truth. I can't do this anymore. I don't care how sorry you are or how much you want to fix things. I'm done. I don't trust either of you, and I don't think I ever will. My ex begged me to reconsider, saying he'd do anything to make it right. My daughter cried, saying she never meant to hurt me. But I didn't care. They didn't think about me when they were making their choices, so why should I think about them now? I told my ex to leave for good. He argued, saying he had nowhere else to go, but I reminded him that wasn't my problem. He finally left, and this time, I don't think he'll be back. As for my daughter, I told her I need space from her too. I didn't kick her out, but I made it clear that our relationship will never be the same. I've started looking for a therapist, not because I want to forgive them, but because I need to figure out how to move forward without carrying all this anger and betrayal with me. I don't know if I'll ever forgive them. Right now, I don't think I want to. People might think I'm being cruel or heartless, but I've finally realized it's not about them anymore. It's about me. I deserve to feel safe and loved, and if that means walking away from the people who betrayed me, so be it. Sometimes, the best thing you can do for yourself is to let go of what's hurting you, even if it means letting go of the people you thought you'd always have. And that's what I'm doing. I'm letting go.